In the name of Allah, the All Beneficent, the All Merciful. Alif, Lam, Mim. This is the book, there is no doubt in it. A guidance to the God wary, who believe in the unseen and maintain the prayer and spend out of what we have provided for them, and who believe in what has been sent down to you and what was sent down before you and are certain of the hereafter. Those follow their Lord's guidance and it is they who are the felicitous. As for the faithless, it is the same to them whether you warn them or do not warn them. They will not have faith. Allah has set a seal on their hearts and their hearing, and there is a blindfold on their sight, and there is a great punishment for them. And among the people are those who say, We have faith in Allah and the last day, but they have no faith. They seek to deceive Allah and those who have faith, yet they deceive no one but themselves, but they are not aware. There is a sickness in their hearts, then Allah increased their sickness, and there is a painful punishment for them because of the lies they used to tell. When they are told, do not cause corruption on the earth. They say, we are only reformers. Look, they are themselves the agents of corruption, but they are not aware. And when they are told, believe like the people who have believed, they say, shall we believe like the fools who have believed? Look, they are themselves the fools, but they do not know. When they meet the faithful, they say, we believe. But when they are alone with their devils, they say, we are with you. We were only deriding them. It is Allah who derides them and leaves them bewildered in their rebellion. They are the ones who brought error for guidance. So their trade did not profit them, nor were they guided. Their parable is that of one who lighted a torch, and when it had lit up all around him, Allah took away their light, and left them sightless in a manifold darkness. Deaf, dumb, and blind, they will not come back. Or that of a rainstorm from the sky, wherein is darkness, thunder, and lightning. They put their fingers in their ears, due to the thunderclaps, apprehensive of death, and Allah besieges they're faithless. The lightning almost snatches away their sight. Whenever it shines for them, they walk in it, and when the darkness falls upon them, they stand. Had Allah willed, he would have taken away their hearing and their sight. Indeed, Allah has power over all things. O mankind, worship your Lord who created you and those who were before you, so that you may be God wary. He who made the earth a place of repose for you, and the sky a canopy, and he sends down water from the sky, and with it he brings forth crops for your sustenance. So do not set up equals to Allah while you know. And if you are in doubt concerning what we have sent down to our servant, then bring a surah like it, and invoke your helpers besides Allah, should you be truthful. And if you do not, and you will not, then beware the fire whose fuel will be humans and stones, prepared for the faithless. And give good news to those who have faith and do righteous deeds, that for them shall be gardens with streams running in them. Whenever they are provided with their fruit for nourishment, they will say, This is what we were provided before, and they were given something resembling it. In it there will be chaste mates for them, and they will remain in it forever. Indeed, Allah is not ashamed to draw a parable, whether it is that of a gnat or something above it. As for those who have faith, they know it is the truth from their Lord. And as for the faithless, they say, What did Allah mean by this parable? Thereby he leads many astray, and thereby he guides many and he leads no one astray thereby except the transgressors. Those who break the covenant made with Allah after having pledged it solemnly, and sever what Allah has commanded to be joined, and cause corruption on the earth, it is they who are the losers. How can you be unfaithful to Allah, seeing that you were lifeless, and he gave you life, then he will make you die, and then he shall bring you to life, and then you will be brought back to him. It is he who created for you all that is in the earth, then he turned to the heaven and fashioned it into seven heavens, and he has knowledge of all things. When your Lord said to the angels, Indeed, I am going to set a viceroy on the earth, they said, Will you set in it someone who will cause corruption in it, and shed blood, while we celebrate your praise and proclaim your sanctity? He said, Indeed, I know what you do not know. And he taught Adam the names, all of them, then presented them to the angels and said, Tell me the names of these if you are truthful. They said, Immaculate are you. We have no knowledge except what you have taught us. Indeed, you are the all-knowing, the all-wise. He said, O Adam, inform them of their names. And when he had informed them of their names, he said, Did I not tell you that I indeed know the unseen in the heavens and the earth, and that I know whatever you disclose and whatever you were concealing? And when we said to the angels, Prostrate before Adam, they prostrated. But not Iblis. He refused and acted arrogantly and he was one of the faithless. We said, O Adam, dwell with your mate in paradise, and eat thereof freely, whensoever you wish. But do not approach this tree, lest you should be among the wrongdoers. Then Satan caused them to stumble from it, and he dislodged them from what they were in. And we said, Get down, being enemies of one another. On the earth shall be your abode, and sustenance for a time. 
Then Adam received certain words from his Lord, and he turned to him clemently. Indeed, he is the all-clement, the all-merciful. We said, Get down from it altogether. Yet, should any guidance come to you from me, those who follow my guidance shall have no fear, nor shall they grieve. But those who are faithless and deny our signs, they shall be the inmates of the fire, and they shall remain in it forever. O children of Israel, remember my blessing, which I bestowed upon you, and fulfill my covenant, that I may fulfill your covenant, and be in awe of me alone, and believe in that which I have sent down, confirming that which is with you, and do not be the first ones to defy it, and do not sell my signs for a paltry gain, and be wary of me alone, and do not mix the truth with falsehood, nor conceal the truth while you know, and maintain the prayer, and give the zakat, and bow along with those who bow in prayer. Will you bid others to piety and forget yourselves while you recite the book? Do you not apply reason and take recourse in patience and prayer? And it is indeed hard, except for the humble, those who are certain that they will encounter their Lord and that they will return to him. O children of Israel, remember my blessing which I bestowed upon you and that I gave you an advantage over all the nations. Beware of the day when no soul shall compensate for another. Neither any intercession shall be accepted from it, nor any ransom shall be received from it, nor will they be helped. And when we delivered you from Pharaoh's clan, who inflicted a terrible torment on you, and slaughtered your sons, and spared your women, and in that there was a great test from your Lord. And when we parted the sea with you, and we delivered you, and drowned Pharaoh's clan, as you looked on. And when we made an appointment with Moses for forty nights, you took up the calf for worship in his absence, and you were wrongdoers. Then... We excused you after that, so that you might give thanks. And when we gave Moses the book and the criterion, so that you might be guided. And recall when Moses said to his people, O my people, you have indeed wronged yourselves by taking up the calf for worship. Now turn penitently to your maker, and slay the guilty among your folks. That will be better for you with your maker. Then he turned to you clemently. Indeed, he is the all clement, the all merciful. And when you said, O Moses, we will not believe you until we see Allah visibly, Thereupon a thunderbolt seized you as you looked on. Then we raised you up after your death, so that you might give thanks. And we shaded you with clouds, and we sent down to you manna and quails. Eat of the good things we have provided for you. And they did not wrong us, but they used to wrong only themselves. And when we said, Enter this town, and eat thereof freely, whensoever you wish, and enter prostrating at the gate, and say, Relieve us of the burden of our sins, that we may forgive your iniquities, and soon we will enhance the virtuous. But the wrongdoers changed the saying with other than what they were told. So he sent down on those who were wrongdoers a plague from the sky, because of the transgressions they used to commit. And when Moses prayed for water for his people, we said, Strike the rock with your staff. Thereat twelve fountains gushed forth from it. Every tribe came to know its drinking place. Eat and drink of Allah's provision, and do not act wickedly on the earth, causing corruption. And when you said, O Moses, we will not put up with one kind of food, so invoke your Lord for us, that he may bring forth for us of that which the earth grows, its greens and its cucumbers, its garlic, its lentils and its onions. He said, Do you seek to replace what is superior with that which is inferior? Go down to any town, and you will indeed get what you ask for. So they were struck with abasement and poverty and they earned Allah's wrath, that because they would defy the signs of Allah and kill the prophets unjustly, that because they would disobey and used to commit transgression. Indeed, the faithful, the Jews, the Christians and the Sabians, those of them who have faith in Allah in the last day and act righteously, they shall have their reward near their Lord, and they will have no fear, nor will they grieve. And when we took a pledge from you and raised the mount above you, declaring, Hold on with power to what we have given you, and remember, that which is in it, so that you may be God wary. Then after that you turned away, and were it not for Allah's grace on you and his mercy, you would surely have been among the losers. And certainly you know those of you who violated the Sabbath, whereupon we said to them, Be you spurned apes. So we made it an exemplary punishment for the present and the succeeding generations, and an advice to the God wary. And when Moses said to his people, Indeed Allah commands you to slaughter a cow, they said, Do you take us in derision? He said, I seek Allah's protection, lest I should be one of the senseless. They said, Invoke your Lord for us, that he may clarify for us what she may be. He said, He says, She is a cow, neither old nor young, of a middle age. Now, do what you are commanded. They said, Invoke your Lord for us, that he may clarify for us what her color may be. He said, He says, 
He is a cow that is yellow, of a bright hue, pleasing to the onlookers. They said, Invoke your Lord for us, that he may clarify for us what she may be. Indeed, all cows are much alike to us, and if Allah wishes, we will surely be guided. He said, He says, She is a cow, not broken to till the earth, or to water the tillage, sound and without blemish. They said, Now have you come up with the truth, and they slaughtered it, though they were about not to do it. And when you killed a soul, and accused one another about it, and Allah was to expose whatever you were concealing. We said, strike him with a piece of it. Thus does Allah revive the dead, and he shows you his signs, so that you may apply reason. Then your hearts hardened after that. So they are like stones, or even harder. For indeed, there are some stones from which streams gush forth. And indeed, there are some of them that split, and water issues from them. And indeed, there are some of them that fall for their fear of Allah. And Allah is not oblivious of what you do. Are you then eager that they should believe you? Though a part of them would hear the word of Allah and then they would distort it after they had understood it and they knew what they were doing. When they meet the faithful, they say, We believe. And when they are alone with one another, they say, Do you recount to them what Allah has revealed to you so that you may argue with you therewith before your Lord? Do you not apply reason? Do they not know that Allah knows whatever they hide and whatever they disclose? And among them are the illiterate who know nothing of the book except hearsay and they only make conjectures. So woe to those who write the book with their hands and then say, This is from Allah, that they may sell it for a paltry gain. So woe to them for what their hands have written, and woe to them for what they earn. And they say, The fire shall not touch us except for a number of days. Say, Have you taken a promise from Allah? If so, Allah shall never break his promise, or do you ascribe to Allah what you do not know? Certainly, whoever commits misdeeds and is besieged by his iniquity, such shall be the inmates of the fire and they shall remain in it forever. And those who have faith and do righteous deeds, they shall be the inhabitants of paradise, they shall remain in it forever. And when we took a pledge from the children of Israel, worship no one but Allah, do good to parents, relatives, orphans and the needy, and speak kindly to people, and maintain the prayer, and give the zakat, you turned away except a few of you, and you were disregardful. And when we took a pledge from you, you shall not shed your own people's blood, and you shall not expel your folks from your homes, you pledged, and you testify to this pledge of your ancestors. Then there you were, killing your folks and expelling a part of your folks from their homes, backing one another against them in sin and in aggression. And if they came to you as captives, you would ransom them, though their expulsion itself was forbidden you. What? Do you believe in part of the book and defy another part? So what is a requital of those of you who do that except disgrace in the life of this world? And on the day of resurrection, they shall be consigned to the severest punishment, and Allah is not oblivious of what you do. They are the ones who bought the life of this world for the hereafter, but the punishment shall not be lightened, nor will they be helped. Certainly, we gave Moses the book, and followed him with the apostles, and we gave Jesus, the son of Mary, manifest proofs, and confirmed him with the Holy Spirit. Is it not that, whenever an apostle brought you that which was not to your liking, you would act arrogantly, so you would impugn a part of them and slay another part? And they say, Our hearts are uncircumcised. Rather, Allah has cursed them for their unfaith. So few of them have faith. And when there came to them a book from Allah, confirming that which is with them, and earlier they would pray for victory over the pagans, so when there came to them what they recognized, they defied it. So may the curse of Allah be on the faithless. Evil is that for which they have sold their souls by defying what Allah has sent down out of envy, that Allah should bestow his grace on any of his servants that he wishes. Thus they earned wrath upon wrath, and there is a humiliating punishment for the faithless. And when they are told, believe in what Allah has sent down, they say, we believe in what was sent down to us, and they disbelieve what is beside it. Though it is a truth, confirming what is with them, say, then why would you kill the prophets of Allah formerly, should you be faithful? Certainly Moses brought you manifest proofs, but then you took up the calf in his absence, and you were wrongdoers. And when we took covenant with you, and raised the mount above you, declaring, Hold on with power to what we have given you, and listen. They said, We hear and disobey, and their hearts had been imbued with the love of the calf, due to their faithlessness. Say, Evil is that to which your faith prompts you, should you be faithful. Say, if the abode of the hereafter with Allah were exclusively for you, and not for other people, then long for death, should you be truthful. But they will not long for it ever, because of what their hands have sent ahead, and Allah knows best the wrongdoers. Surely you will find them the greediest for life of all people, even the idolaters. Each of them is eager to live a thousand years, though it would not deliver him from the punishment, 
were he to live that long, and Allah sees best what they do. Say, whoever is an enemy of Gabriel should know that it is he who has brought it down on your heart with the will of Allah, confirming what has been revealed before it, and as a guidance and good news to the faithful. Say, whoever is an enemy of Allah, his angels and his apostles, and Gabriel and Michael, let him know that Allah is indeed the enemy of the faithless. We have certainly sent down manifest signs to you, and no one defies them except transgressors. Is it not that, whenever they made a covenant, a part of them would cast it away? Rather, the majority of them do not have faith. And when there came to them an apostle from Allah, confirming that which is with them, a part of those who were given the book cast the book of Allah behind their back, as if they did not know that it is Allah's book. And they followed what the devils pursued during Solomon's reign. And Solomon did not turn faithless, but it was the devils who were faithless, teaching the people magic, and what was sent down to the two angels at Babylon, Harut and Marut, and they would not teach anyone without telling him, We are only a test, so do not be faithless. But they would learn from those, too, that with which they could cause a split between man and his wife, though they could not harm anyone with it, except with Allah's leave. And they would learn that which would harm them and bring them no benefit, though they certainly knew that anyone who buys it has no share in the hereafter. Surely evil is that for which they sold their souls, had they known. Had they been faithful and god wary, the reward from Allah would have been better, had they known. O oh, you have faith, do not say Ra'ina, but say Unzurna, and listen, there is a painful punishment for the faithless. Neither the faithless from among the people of the book, nor the idolaters, like that any good be showered on you from your Lord. But Allah singles out for his mercy whomever he wishes, and Allah is dispenser of a mighty grace. For any verse that we abrogate or remove from memories, we bring another which is better than it, or similar to it. Do you not know that Allah has power over all things? Do you not know that to Allah belongs the kingdom of the heavens and the earth? And besides Allah, you do not have any guardian or any helper. Or do you question your apostle as a Moses was questioned formerly? Whoever changes faith for unfaith certainly strays from the right way. Many of the people of the book are eager to turn you into unbelievers after your faith, out of their inner envy, and after the truth had become manifest to them, yet excuse them and forbear until Allah issues his edict. Indeed, Allah has power over all things and maintain the prayer and give the zakat. Any good that you send ahead for your souls, you shall find it with Allah. Indeed, Allah sees best what you do. And they say, No one shall enter paradise except one who is a Jew or a Christian. Those are their false hopes. Say, Produce your evidence should you be truthful. Certainly, whoever submits his will to Allah and is virtuous, he shall have his reward near his Lord, and they shall have no fear, nor shall they grieve. The Jews say, The Christians stand on nothing. And the Christians say the Jews stand on nothing, though they follow the same book. So said those who had no knowledge, words similar to what they say. Allah will judge between them on the day of resurrection concerning that about which they used to differ. Who is a greater wrongdoer than him who denies access to the mosques of Allah, lest his name be celebrated therein and tries to ruin them? Such ones may not enter them except in fear. There is disgrace for them in this world, and there is for them a great punishment in the hereafter. To Allah belongs the east and the west, so whichever way you turn, there is the face of Allah. Allah is indeed all bounteous, all knowing. And they say, Allah has taken a son, immaculate is he, rather to him belongs whatever is in the heavens and the earth. All are obedient to him, the originator of the heavens and the earth. And when he decides on a matter, he just says to it, be, and it is. Those who have no knowledge say, why does not Allah speak to us or come to us a sign? So said those who were before them, words similar to what they say, alike are their hearts. We have certainly made the signs clear for a people who have certainty. Indeed, we have sent you with the truth, as a bearer of good news and as a warner, and you will not be questioned concerning the inmates of hell. Never will the Jews be pleased with you, nor the Christians, unless you followed their creed. Say, indeed, it is the guidance of Allah which is the true guidance, and should you follow their desires after the knowledge of that has come to you, you will not have against Allah any guardian nor any helper. Those to whom we have given the book, follow it as it ought to be followed. They have faith in it. As for those who defy it, it is they who are the losers. O children of Israel, remember my blessing which I bestowed upon you, and that I gave you an advantage over all the nations. And beware of the day when no soul shall compensate for another. Neither shall any ransom be accepted from it, nor shall any intercession benefit it nor will they be helped. 
And when his Lord tested Abraham with certain words, and he fulfilled them, he said, I am making you the Imam of mankind. Said he, and from among my descendants, he said, My pledge does not extend to the unjust. And remember, when we made the house a place of reward for mankind, and a sanctuary, declaring, Take the venue of prayer from Abraham's station. We charged Abraham and Ishmael with its upkeep, saying, Purify my house for those who go around it, for those who make it a retreat, and for those who bow and prostrate. And when Abraham said, My Lord, make this a secure town, and provide its people with fruits, such of them as have faith in Allah and the last day, he said, As for him who has faithless, I will provide for him too for a short time. Then I will shove him toward the punishment of the fire, and it is an evil destination. As Abraham raised the foundations of the house with Ishmael, they prayed, Our Lord, accept it from us. Indeed, you are the all-hearing, the all-knowing. Our Lord, make us submissive to you, and raise from our progeny a nation submissive to you, and show us our rights of worship, and turn to us clemently. Indeed, you are the all-clement, the all-merciful. Our Lord, raise among them an apostle from among them, who should recite to them your signs, and teach them the book and wisdom, and purify them. Indeed, you are the Almighty, the All-Wise. And who will ever renounce Abraham's creed, except one who fools himself? We certainly chose him in the present world, and in the hereafter he will indeed be among the righteous. When his Lord said to him, Submit, he said, I submit to the Lord of all the worlds. Abraham enjoined this creed upon his children, and so did Jacob, saying, My children, Allah has indeed chosen this religion for you, so never die, except as Muslims. Were you witnesses when death approached Jacob, when he said to his children, What will you worship after me? They said, We will worship your God and the God of your fathers, Abraham, Ishmael, and Isaac, the one God, and to him do we submit. That was a nation that has passed, for it there will be what it has earned, and for you there will be what you have earned, and you will not be questioned about what they used to do. And they say, Be either Jews or Christians, that you may be rightly guided. Say rather, We will follow the creed of Abraham, a Hanif, and he was not one of the polytheists. Say, we have faith in Allah, and that which has been sent down to us, and that which was sent down to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and the tribes, and that which Moses and Jesus were given, and that which the prophets were given from their Lord. We make no distinction between any of them, and to him do we submit. So, if they believe in the like of what you believe in, then they are certainly guided, and if they turn away, then they are only steeped in defiance. Allah shall suffice at you against them and he is the all-hearing, the all-knowing. The baptism of Allah, and who baptizes better than Allah, and him do we worship. Say, will you argue with us concerning Allah? Well, he is our Lord, and your Lord, and our deeds belong to us, and your deeds belong to you, and we worship him dedicatedly. Do you say that Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and the tribes were Jews or Christians? Say, is it you who know better, or Allah? And who is a greater wrongdoer than him who conceals a testimony that is with him from Allah, and Allah is not oblivious of what you do? That was a nation that has passed, for it there will be what it has earned, and for you there will be what you have earned, and you will not be questioned about what they used to do. The foolish among the people will say, What has turned them away from the Qibla they were following? Say to Allah belong the east and the west, he guides whomever he wishes to a straight path. Thus, we have made you a middle nation that you may be witnesses to the people and that the apostle may be a witness to you. And we did not appoint the Qibla you were following, but that we may ascertain those who follow the apostle from those who turn back on their heels. It was indeed a hard thing except for those whom Allah has guided. And Allah would not let your prayers go to waste. Indeed, Allah is most kind and merciful to mankind. We certainly see you turning your face about in the sky. We will surely turn you to a Qibla of your liking. So turn your face towards the holy mosque, and wherever you may be, turn your faces towards it. Indeed, those who are given the book surely know that it is the truth from their Lord, and Allah is not oblivious of what they do. Even if you bring those who are given the book every kind of sign, they will not follow your Qibla, nor shall you follow their Qibla, nor will any of them follow the Qibla of the other. And if you follow their desires after the knowledge that has come to you, you will indeed be one of the wrongdoers. Those whom we have given the book, recognize him just as they recognize their sons but a part of them indeed conceal the truth while they know this is the truth from your lord so do not be among the skeptics everyone has a sinisher to which he turns so take the lead in all good works wherever you may be allah will bring you all together indeed allah has power over all things whensoever you may go out turn your face towards the holy mosque 
Indeed, it is a truth from your Lord, and Allah is not oblivious of what you do. And whensoever you may go out, turn your face towards the holy mosque, and wherever you may be, turn your faces towards it, so that the people may have no argument against you, neither those of them who are wrongdoers. So do not fear them, but fear me, that I may complete my blessing on you, and so that you may be guided. As we send to you an apostle from among yourselves, who recites to you our signs, and purifies you, and teaches you the book and wisdom, and teaches you what you did not know. Remember me, and I will remember you, and thank me, and do not be ungrateful to me. O you who have faith, take recourse in patience and prayer. Indeed, Allah is with the patient. And do not call those who are slain in Allah's way dead. Rather, they are living, but you are not aware. We will surely test you with a measure of fear and hunger, and a loss of wealth, lives and fruits. And give good news to the patient, those who, when an affliction visits them, say, Indeed, we belong to Allah, and to him do we indeed return. It is they who receive the blessings of their Lord and his mercy, and it is they who are the rightly guided. Indeed, Safa and Marwa are among Allah's sacraments, so whoever makes Hajj to the house or performs the Umrah, there is no sin upon him to circuit between them. Should anyone do good of his own accord, then Allah is indeed appreciative, all-knowing. Indeed, those who conceal what we have sent down of manifest proofs and guidance, after we have clarified it in the book for mankind, they shall be cursed by Allah and cursed by the curses, except such as repent, make amends and clarify. Those I shall pardon, and I am the all-clement, the all-merciful. Indeed, those who turn faithless and die while they are faithless, it is they on whom shall be the curse of Allah, the angels and all mankind. They will remain in it forever, and the punishment shall not be lightened, nor will they be granted any respite. Your God is the one God, there is no God except Him, the All-Beneficent, the All-Merciful. Indeed, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, and the alternation of night and day, and the ships that sail at sea with profit to men, and the water that Allah sends down from the sky, with which He revives the earth after its death, and scatters therein every kind of animal, and the changing of the winds, and the clouds disposed between the sky and the earth, are surely signs for a people who apply reason. Among the people are those who set up compeers besides Allah, loving them as if loving Allah. But the faithful have a more ardent love for Allah, though the wrongdoers will see, when they cite the punishment, that power altogether belongs to Allah, and that Allah is severe in punishment. When those who are followed will disown the followers, and they will cite the punishment, while all their means of recourse will be cut off. And when the followers will say, Had there been another turn for us, we would disown them, as they disown us now. Thus shall Allah show them their deeds as regrets for themselves, and they shall not leave the fire. O mankind, eat of what is lawful and pure in the earth, and do not follow in Satan's steps. Indeed, he is your manifest enemy. He only prompts you to commit evil and indecent acts, and that you attribute to Allah what you do not know. When they are told, follow what Allah has sent down, they say, we will rather follow what we have found our fathers following. What? Even if their fathers neither applied any reason nor were guided. The parable of the faithless is that of someone who shouts, after that which does not hear anything except a call and cry, deaf, dumb and blind, they do not apply reason. O oh, you who have faith, eat of the good things we have provided you, and thank Allah if it is him that you worship. He has forbidden you only carrion, blood, the flesh of the swine, and that which has been offered to other than Allah. But should someone be compelled without being rebellious or oppressive, there shall be no sin upon him. Indeed, Allah is all forgiving, all merciful. Indeed, those who conceal what Allah has sent down of the book and sell it for a paltry gain, they do not take in into their bellies anything except fire, and Allah shall not speak to them on the day of resurrection, nor shall he purify them, and there is a painful punishment for them. They are the ones who brought error for guidance and punishment for pardon. How patient of them to face the fire. That is so because Allah has sent down the book with the truth, and those who differ about the book are surely in extreme defiance. Piety is not to turn your faces to the east or the west. Rather, piety is personified by those who have faith in Allah and the last day, the angels, the book, and the prophets, and who give their wealth for the love of him, to relatives, orphans, the needy, the traveller, and the beggar, and for the freeing of the slaves, and maintain the prayer and give the zakat, and those who fulfil their covenants when they pledge themselves, and those who are patient in stress and distress, and in the heat of battle, they are the ones who are true to the covenant, and it is they who are the God wary. O oh, you who have faith, retribution is prescribed for you regarding the slain, free man for free man, slave for slave, and female for female. But if one is granted any extenuation by his brother, let the follow-up for the blood money be honourable, 
and let the payment to him be with kindness. That is a remission from your Lord and a mercy, and should anyone transgress after that, there shall be a painful punishment for him. There is life for you in retribution, O you who possess intellect. Maybe you will be God wary. Prescribed for you when death approaches any of you and he leaves behind any property is that he make a bequest for his parents and relatives in an honourable manner, an obligation on the God wary. And should anyone alter it after hearing it, its sin shall indeed lie on those who alter it. Indeed, Allah is all hearing, all knowing. But should someone, fearing deviance or sin, on the testator's behalf, set things right between them, there is no sin upon him. Indeed, Allah is all forgiving, all merciful. O you who have faith, prescribed for you is fasting, as it was prescribed for those who were before you, so that you may be God wary, that for known days. But should any of you be sick or on a journey, let it be a similar number of other days. Those who find it straining shall be liable to atonement by feeding a needy person. Should anyone do good of his own accord, that is better for him, and to fast is better for you, should you know. The month of Ramadan is one in which the Quran was sent down as guidance to mankind, with manifest proofs of guidance and the criterion. So let those of you who witness it fast in it. And, as for someone who is sick or on a journey, let it be a similar number of other days. Allah desires ease for you, and he does not desire hardship for you. And so that you may complete the number, and magnify Allah for guiding you, and that you may give thanks. When my servants ask you about me, tell them that I am indeed nearmost. I answer the supplicant's call when he calls me. So let them respond to me, and let them have faith in me so that they may fare rightly. You are permitted on the night of the fast to go into your wives. They are a garment for you, and you are a garment for them. Allah knew that he used to betray yourselves, so he pardoned you and excused you. So now consort with them, and seek what Allah has ordained for you, and eat and drink until the white streak becomes manifest to you from the dark streak at the crack of dawn. Then complete the fast until nightfall, and do not consort with them while you dwell in confinement in the mosque. These are Allah's bounds, so do not approach them. Thus does Allah clarify his signs for mankind, so that they may be God wary. Do not eat up your wealth among yourselves wrongfully, nor proffer it to the judges, in order to eat up a part of the people's wealth sinfully, while you know that it is immoral to do so. They question you concerning the new moons, say, they are time-keeping signs for the people, and for the sake of Hajj. It is not piety that you should come into houses from the rear, rather piety is personified by one who is God wary and comes into houses from their doors, and be wary of Allah so that you may be felicitous. Fight in the way of Allah, those who fight you, but do not transgress. Indeed, Allah does not like transgressors, and kill them wherever you confront them, and expel them from where they expelled you, for faithlessness is graver than killing. But do not fight them near the holy mosque unless they fight you therein, but if they fight you, kill them, such is the requital of the faithless. But if they relinquish, then Allah is indeed all-forgiving, all-merciful. Fight them until faithlessness is no more and religion becomes exclusively for Allah. Then, if they relinquish, there shall be no reprisal except against the wrongdoers, a sacred month for a sacred month, and all sanctities require retribution. So should anyone aggress against you, assail him in the manner he assailed you, and be wary of Allah, and know that Allah is with the God wary. Spend in the way of Allah, and do not cast yourselves with your own hands into destruction, and be virtuous. Indeed, Allah loves the virtuous. Complete the Hajj and the Umrah for Allah's sake, and if you are prevented, then make such sacrificial offering as is feasible, and do not shave your heads until the offering reaches its assigned place. But should any of you be sick, or have a hurt in his head, let the atonement be by fasting, or charity, or sacrifice, and when you have security for those who enjoy release from the restrictions by virtue of the Umrah until the Hajj, let the offering be such as is feasible. As for someone who cannot afford the offering, let him fast three days during the Hajj, and seven when you return, that is a period of ten complete days. That is for someone whose family does not dwell by the Holy Mosque, and be wary of Allah, and know that Allah is severe in retribution. The Hajj season is in months well known, so whoever decides on Hajj pilgrimage therein, should know that there is to be no sexual contact, vicious talk or disputing during the Hajj. And whatever good you do, Allah knows it, and take provision, for indeed the best provision is God wariness. So be wary of me, O you who possess intellect. There is no sin upon you in seeking your Lord's grace during the Hajj season. Then, when you stream out of Arafat, remember Allah at the Holy Mashar, and remember Him as He has guided you, and earlier you were indeed among the astray. Then stream out from where the people stream out, and plead to Allah for forgiveness. Indeed, Allah is all-forgiving, all-merciful. 
And when you finish your rites, then remember Allah as you would remember your fathers or with a more ardent remembrance. Among the people there are those who say, Our Lord, give us in this world, but for such there is no share in the hereafter. And among them there are those who say, Our Lord, give us good in this world and good in the hereafter, and save us from the punishment of the fire. Such shall partake of what they have earned, and Allah is swift at reckoning. Remember Allah in the appointed days, then whoever hastens off in a couple of days, there is no sin upon him, and whoever delays, there is no sin upon him. That for one who has been God wary, and be wary of Allah, and know that toward him you will be mustered. Among the people is he whose talk about worldly life impresses you, and he holds Allah witness to what is in his heart, though he is the staunchest of enemies. And if he were to wield authority, he would try to cause corruption in the land, and to ruin the crop and the stock, and Allah does not like corruption. And when he is told, Be wary of Allah, conceit seizes him sinfully, so let hell suffice him, and it is surely an evil resting place. And among the people is he who sells his soul, seeking the pleasure of Allah, and Allah is most kind to his servants. O oh, you who have faith, enter into submission altogether, and do not follow in Satan's steps. He is indeed your manifest enemy. And should you stumble after the manifest proofs that have come to you, know that Allah is almighty, all wise. Do they await anything but that Allah's command should come to them in the shades of the clouds with the angels and the matter will be decided once for all, and to Allah all matters are returned. Ask the children of Israel how many a manifest sign we had given them, and whoever changes Allah's blessing after it has come to him. Indeed, Allah is severe in retribution. Worldly life has been glamorized for the faithless, and they ridicule the faithful. But those who are god weary shall be above them on the day of resurrection, and Allah provides for whomever he wishes without any reckoning. Mankind were a single community. Then Allah sent the prophets as bearers of good news and as warners, and he sent down with them the book with the truth, that it may judge between the people concerning that about which they differed, and none differed in it except those who had been given it, after the manifest proofs had come down to them, out of envy among themselves. Then Allah guided those who had faith to the truth of what they differed in by his will, and Allah guides whomever he wishes to a straight path. Do you suppose that you shall enter paradise, though there has not yet come to you the like of what befell those who went before you? Stress and distress befell them, and they were convulsed until the apostle and the faithful who were with him said, When will Allah's help come? Look, Allah's help is indeed near. They ask you as to what you should spend. Say, Whatever wealth you spend, let it be for parents, relatives, orphans, the needy, and the traveller, and whatever good that you may do, Allah indeed knows it. Warfare has been prescribed for you, though it is repulsive to you. Yet, it may be that you dislike something while it is good for you, and it may be that you love something while it is bad for you, and Allah knows and you do not know. They ask you concerning warfare in the holy month, say, it is an outrageous thing to fight in it, but to keep people from Allah's way and to be unfaithful to him and to keep people from the holy mosque, and to expel its people from it, are more outrageous with Allah, and faithlessness is graver than killing, and they will not cease fighting you until they turn you away from your religion, if they can. And whoever of you turns away from his religion and dies faithless, they are the ones whose works have failed in this world and the hereafter. They shall be the inmates of the fire, and they shall remain in it forever. Indeed, those who have become faithful, and those who have migrated and waged jihad in the way of Allah, it is they who expect Allah's mercy, and Allah is all-forgiving, all-merciful. They ask you concerning wine and gambling, say, There is a great sin in both of them, and some profits for the people, but their sinfulness outweighs their profit. And they ask you as what they should spend, say, All that is surplus, thus does Allah clarify his signs for you, so that you may reflect about the world and the hereafter. And they ask you concerning the orphans, say, It is better to set right their affairs, and if you intermingle with them, they are of course your brothers. Allah knows the ones who cause corruption from the one who brings about reform. And had Allah wished, he would have put you to hardship. Indeed, Allah is almighty, all wise. Do not marry idolatresses until they embrace faith. A faithful slave girl is better than an idolatress, though she should impress you. And do not marry your daughters to idolaters until they embrace faith. A faithful slave is better than an idolater, though he should impress you. Those invite others to the fire. But Allah invites to paradise and pardon by his will, and he clarifies his signs for the people so that they may take admonition. They ask you concerning intercourse during menses. Say, it is hurtful, so keep away from wives during the menses, 
and do not approach them until they are clean. And when they become clean, go into them as Allah has commanded you. Indeed, Allah loves the penitent, and he loves those who keep clean. Your women are a tillage for you, so come to your tillage whenever you like, and send ahead for your souls, and be God wary, and know that you will encounter him, and give good news to the faithful. Do not make Allah an obstacle through your oaths, to being pious and God wary, and to bringing about concord between people, and Allah is all hearing, all knowing. Allah shall not take you to task for what is unconsidered in your oaths, but he shall take you to task for what your hearts have incurred, and Allah is all forgiving, all forbearing. For those who forswear their wives shall be awaiting for four months, and if they recant, Allah is indeed all forgiving, all merciful. But if they resolve on divorce, Allah is indeed all hearing, all knowing. Divorced women shall wait by themselves for three periods of purity, after menses, and it is not lawful for them to conceal what Allah has created in their wombs, if they believe in Allah and the last day. And the husbands have a greater right to restore them during this duration, if they desire reconcilement. The wives have rights similar to the obligations upon them, in accordance with honourable norms, and men have a degree above them, and Allah is almighty or wise. Revocable divorce may be only twice, then let there be either an honourable retention or a kindly release, and it is not lawful for you to take back anything from what you have given them, unless a couple fear that they may not maintain Allah's bounds. So if you fear they would not maintain Allah's bounds, there is no sin upon them in what she may give to secure her release. These are Allah's bounds, so do not transgress them, and whoever transgresses the bounds of Allah, it is they who are the wrongdoers, and if he divorces her, she will not be lawful for him until she marries a husband other than him, and if he divorces her, there is no sin upon them to remarry, if they think that they can maintain Allah's bounds. These are Allah's bounds which he clarifies for people who have knowledge. When you divorce women and they complete their term, then either retain them honourably or release them honourably, and do not retain them maliciously, in order that you may transgress, and whoever does that certainly wrongs himself. Do not take the signs of Allah in derision, and remember Allah's blessing upon you and what he has sent down to you of the book and wisdom to advise you therewith. Be wary of Allah, and know that Allah has knowledge of all things. When you divorce women, and they complete their term, do not thwart them, lest they should remarry their husbands when they honourably reach mutual consent. Herewith are advised those of you who believe in Allah and the last day. That will be more decent and purer for you, and Allah knows, and you do not know. Mothers shall suckle their children for two full years. That for such as desire to complete the suckling, and on the father shall be their maintenance and clothing in accordance with honourable norms. No soul is to be tasked except according to its capacity. Neither the mother shall be made to suffer harm on a child's account, nor the father on account of his child. And on the father's care devolve duties and rights similar to that. And if the couple desire to wean with mutual consent and consultation, there will be no sin upon them. And if you want to have your children wet nursed, there will be no sin upon you, so as long as you pay what you give in accordance with honourable norms, and be wary of Allah, and know that Allah sees best what you do. As for those of you who die, leaving wives, they shall wait by themselves four months and ten days, and when they complete their term, there will be no sin upon you in respect of what they may do with themselves in accordance with honourable norms, and Allah is well aware of what you do. There is no sin upon you in what you may hint in proposing to recently widowed women, or what you may secretly cherish within your hearts. Allah knows that you will be thinking of them, but do not make troth with them secretly, unless you say honourable words, and do not resolve on a marriage tie, until the prescribed term is complete. Know that Allah knows what is in your hearts, so beware of him, and know that Allah is all-forgiving, all-forbearing. There is no sin upon you if you divorce women while you have not yet touched them, or settled a dowry for them, yet provide for them the well of according to his capacity, and the poorly off according to his capacity, with a sustenance that is honourable, an obligation on the virtuous. And if you divorce them before you touch them, and you have already settled a dowry for them, then pay them half of what you have settled, unless they forego it, or someone in whose hand is the marriage tie forgoes it. And to forego is nearer to god wariness. So do not forget graciousness among yourselves. Indeed, Allah sees best what you do. Be watchful of your prayers, and especially the middle prayer, and stand in obedience to Allah, and should you fear a danger, then pray on foot or mounted, and when you are safe, remember Allah, as he taught you what you did not know. Those of you who die, leaving wives, shall bequeath for their wives, providing for a year without turning them out. But if they leave, there is no sin upon you, in respect of what they may do with themselves, 
observing honorable norms, and Allah is almighty, all wise. For the divorced women, there shall be a provision in accordance with honorable norms, an obligation on the god weary. Thus does Allah clarify his signs to you, so that you may apply reason. Have you not regarded those who left their homes in thousands, apprehensive of death? Whereupon Allah said to them, Die, then he revived them. Indeed, Allah is gracious to mankind, but most people do not give thanks. Fight in the way of Allah, and know that Allah is all-hearing, all-knowing. Who is it that will lend Allah a good loan that he may multiply it for him several fold? And Allah tightens and expands the means of life, and to him you shall be brought back. Have you not regarded the elite of the Israelites after Moses, when they said to their prophet, Appoint for us a king, that we may fight in the way of Allah? He said, May it not be that you will not fight if fighting were prescribed for you? They said, Why would we not fight in the way of Allah, when we have been expelled from our homes and separated from our children? But when fighting was prescribed for them, they turned back, except a few of them, and Allah knows best the wrongdoers. Their prophet said to them, Allah has appointed Saul as king for you. They said, How can he have kingship over us when we have a greater right to kingship than him, as he has not been given ample wealth? He said, Indeed, Allah has chosen him over you, and enhanced him vastly in knowledge and physique, and Allah gives his kingdom to whomever he wishes, and Allah is all bounteous, all knowing. Their prophet said to them, Indeed, the sign of his kingship shall be that the ark will come to you, bearing tranquility from your Lord, and the relics left behind by the house of Moses and the house of Aaron, borne by the angels. There is indeed a sign in that for you, should you be faithful. As Saul set out with his troops, he said, Allah will test you with a stream. Anyone who drinks from it will not belong to me, but those who do not drink from it will belong to me, barring someone who draws a scoop with his hand. But they drank from it all except a few of them. So when he crossed it along with the faithful who were with him, they said, We have no strength today against Goliath and his troops. Those who were certain they will encounter Allah said, How many a small party has overcome a larger party by Allah's will, and Allah is with the patient. So when they marched out for encounter with Goliath and his troops, they said, Our Lord, pour patience upon us, make our feet steady and assist us against the faithless lot. Thus they routed them with Allah's will, and David killed Goliath, and Allah gave him the kingdom and wisdom, and taught him whatever he liked. Were it not for Allah's repelling the people by means of one another, the earth would surely have been corrupted. But Allah is gracious to the world's creatures. These are the signs of Allah which we recite for you in truth, and you are indeed one of the apostles. These are the apostles, some of whom we gave an advantage over others. Of them are those to whom Allah spoke, and some of them he raised in rank. And we gave Jesus, son of Mary, manifest proofs and strengthened him with the Holy Spirit. Had Allah wished, those who succeeded them would not have fought each other after the manifest proofs had come to them, but they differed. So there were among them those who had faith, and there were among them those who were faithless. And had Allah wished, they would not have fought one another, but Allah does whatever he desires. O you who have faith, find out of what we have provided you before there comes a day on which there will be no bargaining, neither friendship, nor intercession, and the faithless, they are the wrongdoers. Allah, there is no God except Him, is the living one, the all-sustainer, neither drowsiness befalls Him, nor sleep. To Him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth. Who is it that may intercede with Him, except with His permission? He knows that which is before them and that which is behind them, and they do not comprehend anything of His knowledge except what He wishes. His seat embraces the heavens and the earth, and He is not wearied by their preservation and he is the all-exalted, the all-supreme. There is no compulsion in religion. Rectitude has become distinct from error. The one who disavows the rebels and has faith in Allah has held fast to the firmest handle for which there is no breaking, and Allah is all-hearing, all-knowing. Allah is the guardian of the faithful. He brings them out of darkness into light. As for the faithless, their patrons are the rebels who drive them out of light into darkness. They shall be the inmates of the fire, and they shall remain in it forever. Have you not regarded him who argued with Abraham about his Lord, because Allah had given him kingdom, when Abraham said, My Lord is he who gives life and brings death? He replied, I too give life and bring death. Abraham said, Indeed, Allah brings the sun from the east, now you bring it from the west. Thereat the faithless one was dumbfounded, and Allah does not guide the wrongdoing lot, or him who came upon a township as it lay fallen on its trellises. He said, How will Allah revive this after its death? So Allah made him die for a hundred years. Then he resurrected him. He said, How long have you remained? Said he, I have remained a day or part of a day. He said, 
Rather, you have remained a hundred years. Now, look at your food and drink, which have not rotted. Then, look at your ass. This was done that we may make you a sign for mankind. And look at the bones, how we arrange them, and then clothe them with flesh. When it became evident to him, he said, I know that Allah has power over all things. And when Abraham said, My Lord, show me how you revive the dead. He said, Do you not believe? He said, Yes, indeed, but in order that my heart may be at rest. He said, Take four of the birds, then cut them into pieces, and place a part of them on every mountain, then call them. They will come to you hastening, and know that Allah is almighty and all wise. The parable of those who spend their wealth in the way of Allah is that of a grain which grows seven ears, in every ear a hundred grains. Allah enhances several fold whomever he wishes, and Allah is all bounteous, all knowing. Those who spend their wealth in the way of Allah, and then do not follow up what they have spent with reproaches and affronts, they shall have their reward near their Lord, and they shall have no fear, nor will they grieve. An honourable word with pardon is better than a charity followed by affront. Allah is all-sufficient, most forbearing. O oh, you who have faith, do not render your charities void by reproaches and affronts like those who spend their wealth to be seen by people and have no faith in Allah and the last day. Their parable is that of a rock covered with soil. Our downpour strikes it, leaving it bare. They have no power over anything of what they have earned. And Allah does not guide the faithless lot. The parable of those who spend their wealth seeking Allah's pleasure and to confirm themselves is that of a garden on a hillside. The downpour strikes it, whereupon it brings forth its fruit twofold. And if it is not a downpour that strikes it, then a shower, and Allah sees best what you do. Would any of you like to have a garden of palm trees and vines with streams running in it, with all kinds of fruit for him therein, and old age were to strike him while he was weakly offspring, whereupon a fiery hurricane were to hit it, whereat it lies burnt? Thus does Allah clarify his signs for you, so that you may reflect. O oh, you who have faith, spend of the good things you have earned, and of what we bring forth for you from the earth, and do not be of the mind to give the bad part of it, for you yourselves would not take it, unless you overlook it, and know that Allah is all-sufficient, all-laudable. Satan frightens you of poverty, and prompts you to commit indecent acts, but Allah promises you his forgiveness and grace, and Allah is all-bounteous, all-knowing. He gives wisdom to whomever he wishes, and he who is given wisdom is certainly given an abundant good, but none takes admonition except those who possess intellect. Whatever charity you may give, or vows that you may vow, Allah indeed knows it, and the wrongdoers have no helpers. If you disclose your charities, that is well, but if you hide them and give them to the poor, that is better for you, and it will atone for some of your misdeeds, and Allah is well aware of what you do. It is not up to you to guide them, rather it is Allah who guides whomever he wishes. And whatever wealth you spend, it is for your own benefit, as you do not spend but to seek Allah's pleasure. And whatever wealth you spend will be repaid to you in full, and you will not be wronged. The charities are for the poor who are straitened in the way of Allah, not capable of moving about in the land for trade. The unaware suppose them to be well off because of their reserve. You recognize them by their mark. They do not ask the people importunately, and whatever wealth you may spend, Allah indeed knows it. Those who give their wealth by night and day, secretly and openly, they shall have their reward near their Lord, and they will have no fear, nor will they grieve. Those who exact usury will not stand, but like one deranged by the devil's touch. That is because they say, trade is just like usury, while Allah has allowed trade and forbidden usury. Whoever on receiving advice from his Lord relinquishes usury, shall keep the gains of what is past and his matter shall rest with Allah. As for those who resume, they shall be the inmates of the fire, and they shall remain in it forever. Allah brings usury to naught, but he makes charities flourish. Allah does not like any sinful ingrate. Indeed, those who have faith, do righteous deeds, maintain the prayer, and give the zakat. They shall have their reward near their Lord, and they will have no fear, nor will they grieve. O you who have faith, be wary of Allah, and abandon all claims to what remains of usury, should you be faithful. And if you do not, then be informed of a war from Allah and his apostle. And if you repent, then you will have your principle, neither harming others nor suffering harm. And if the debtor is in straits, let there be a respite until the time of ease. And if you remit the debt as charity, it will be better for you, should you know. And beware of a day in which you will be brought back to Allah. Then every soul shall be recompensed fully for what it has earned, and they will not be wronged. O oh, you who have faith, when you contract a loan for a specified term, write it down. Let a writer write between you with honesty, and let not the writer refuse to write, as Allah has taught him. So 
but let him write and let the one who incurs the debt dictate and let him be wary of Allah his Lord and not diminish anything from it. But if the debtor be feeble-minded or weak or incapable of dictating himself, then let his guardian dictate with honesty and take as witness two witnesses from your men. And if there are not two men, then a man and two women from those whom you approve as witnesses, so that if one of the two defaults, the other will remind her. The witnesses must not refuse when they are called, and do not consider it wearisome to write it down, whether it be a big or a small sum, as being lent until its term. That is more just with Allah, and more upright in respect to testimony, and the likeliest way to avoid doubt, unless it is an on-the-spot deal that you transact between yourselves, in which case there is no sin upon you not to write it. Take witnesses when you make a deal, and let no harm be done to writer or witness. And if you did that, it would be sinful of you. Be wary of Allah, and Allah shall teach you, and Allah has knowledge of all things. If you are on a journey and cannot find a writer, then a retained pledge shall suffice. And if one of you entrusts to another, let him who is trusted deliver his trust, and let him be wary of Allah, his Lord, and do not conceal testimony. Anyone who conceals it, his heart will indeed be sinful and Allah knows best what you do. To Allah belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth, and whether you disclose what is in your hearts or hide it, Allah will bring you to account for it. Then he will forgive whomever he wishes and punish whomever he wishes, and Allah has power over all things. The apostle has faith in what has been sent down to him from his Lord and all the faithful. Each of them has faith in Allah, his angels, his scriptures and his apostles. They declare, we make no distinction between any of his apostles and they say, We hear and obey. Our Lord, forgive us, and toward you is a return. Allah does not task any soul beyond its capacity. Whatever good it earns is to its benefit, and whatever evil it incurs is to its harm. Our Lord, take us not to task if we forget or make mistakes. Our Lord, place not upon us a burden as you placed on those who were before us. Our Lord, lay not upon us what we have no strength to bear. Excuse us and forgive us and be merciful to us. You are our master, so help us against the faithless lot.